With that being said, our final question is this. What would be the autosomal makeup of early Semitic populations and Abraham? Well, if Natufians are the ancestors of Semites, then early Semitic populations are going to carry Natufian DNA. The Natufian culture. It was an Epipaleolithic culture that existed from 12,500 to 9,500 BC in the Levant. The Natufian culture is the name given to the sedentary late Epipaleolithic hunter-gatherers living in the Levant region of the Near East between about 12,500 and 10,200 years ago. The Natufians foraged for food such as emmer wheat, barley, and almonds, and hunted gazelle, deer, cattle, horses, and wild boar. The direct descendants of the Natufians, known as the Pre-Pottery Neolithic or PPN, were among the earliest farmers on the planet. And if you look to the right hand side of the screen, you'll see the distribution of Natufian DNA and ancestry. This next chart illustrating Natufian DNA comes from Quora, titled, Whose Ancestry Became Most Widespread Over the Millennia Up to Modern Times, that of Neolithic farming people from Anatolia, Levant, Iran, or the Caucasus. And it reads, Using a genetic ancestry model with about 20 key reference ancient populations from all over the world, I modeled a large sample of more than 400 modern population groups. Generally ethnic groups, regional populations, or entire nationalities that I have access to via the public Global 25 data set. After that, I created maps, see below, with the following legend. Darkest tone, plus 30%, medium tone, between 10% and 30%, light tone, between 5% and 10%. The earliest farmers from the Levant, who were the culmination of the sedentary and complex hunter-gatherer culture of the Natufians, spread mostly southward and southwestward into Africa, and were apparently encroached in their own homeland by Anatolia. Iranian and Caucasian farmers as they expanded, though it preserves high presence in the southern Levant, Palestine, Israel, and Jordan. Thus the genetic ancestry derived from or closely related to the Natufians from the Levant is less widespread in the Old World than the Anatolian one. But its geographic expanse is also very remarkable, particularly in Africa. So again, this is just another map showing the genetic distribution of Natufian DNA and ancestry. And here is another map from Anthrogenica, and it shows the distribution of Levant's Neolithic DNA and ancestry. And now as we can see, it's widespread throughout the Middle East as well as the Mediterranean and North Africa. And here is a breakdown of Natufian ancestry and DNA from Punt's DNA LK. 12 ancient world and the highest form of Natufian DNA is in the Middle East as it expands outwards into Africa and the Mediterranean. Now here is the distribution of Semites and Natufian ancestry. The overlap is perfect. The natural border of Semites seems to be above Syria and Iraq but this is also where Natufian DNA also begins to be less. The Semitic genome is highly likely Natufian. When it comes to modern Semitic populations, it's actually Yemenis, Bedouins, and Arabians that have the highest amount of Natufian DNA. And these groups biblically would likely be descendants of Joktan, who is the ancestor of Arabians and the close genetic relative to Abraham through Eber. These Yemeni populations also carry up to 25-50% to of haplogroup E. According to the paper titled Projecting Ancient Ancestry in Modern Day Arabians and Iranians, a key role of the past exposed Arabo Persian Gulf on human remains, it reads Modern Saudi Arabians and Yemeni samples clustered tightly in the lower left quadrant overlapping with the three Natufian samples and were close to the Levant PPNB, PPNC, and Levant Bronze Age samples. And according to DNA consultants, it reads, Three of the individuals had Y chromosomes belonging to haplogroup E1b1, 
which likely originated in East Africa and is also found in early Neolithic farmers from Jordan. Natufian genomes also show similarity to modern day populations in Saudi Arabia as well as the Bedouin nomadic peoples of the Arabian Peninsula. Yemenis and Saudis have between 57% to 71% of Natufian-related ancestry. Other Semitic populations in the Middle East have high amounts of Natufian DNA as well, from 50% up to 60%. As an example, Yemenite Jews can carry 59% of Natufian DNA. Iraqi Jews can carry upwards to 56% of Natufian DNA. Iranian Jews can carry 55% of Natufian DNA. The Druze can carry 55% of Natufian DNA. The Assyrians carry 55% of Natufian DNA as well. The Palestinians can carry 54% of Natufian DNA. The Lebanese can carry around 53% of Natufian DNA. Jordanians can carry 52% of Natufian DNA. And Syrians can carry 51% of Natufian DNA. And the list goes on. What's also interesting about this is that these Semites also carry decent amounts of haplogroup E. As an example, Samaritans in Israel from the tribe of Levi carry up to 100% of haplogroup E. The Arabs in Egypt carry 68% of haplogroup E. Arabs in Jordan carry 44% of haplogroup E. Arab Palestinian Christians carry 31% of haplogroup E. The Parsi and Iran of Tehran carry 30% of haplogroup E, the Assyrians carry 22% of haplogroup E, the Lebanese carry 19% of haplogroup E, the Druze carry 18% of haplogroup E, and the list goes on. But one thing I find fascinating about Natufian DNA is how much it overlaps and matches up perfectly with Afro-Asiatic populations. If you look at a genetic distance chart and see who's closest genetically to the Natufians, it's mainly Afro-Asiatic populations. But you can go even further with this and look at a distribution map of Afro-Asiatic populations and Natufian DNA and see that they both overlap beautifully. But this makes a lot of sense because Natufians are the ancestors of Afro-Asiatic populations. According to the paper titled, The Prehistory of Language from the Perspective of the Y Chromosome, it reads, Bellwood in 2005, based on his interpretation of the archaeological data, suggests that Afro-Asiatic languages initially evolved in Southwest Asia and co-expanded out of this region with the spread of agriculture. Interestingly, linguistic data may also support this model of Afro-Asiatic origins. Using linguistic reconstruction, Matolarev in 2002 presents a proto-Afro-Asiatic lexicon of farming terminology. Based on the reconstructions, he suggests that the Natufians, agriculture, and Afro-Asiatic co-evolved in Southwest Asia. Finally, another reason for identifying Southwest Asia as a punitive homeland of Afro-Asiatic languages is Y-chromosome data as presented below in section 4 and 5. According to the paper titled Prehistory of a Dispersal of Proto-Afrosan, Proto-Afro-Asiatic Farming Lexicon, it reads, The identification of Proto-Afrosans as Natufians and Post-Natufians seems to satisfy all the four criteria. Besides the farming lexicon, there are sets of reconstructed proto afrosan terms pointing to incipient animal breeding, a wide variety of dwelling and settlement types, a territory characterized by both desert and steep forest type of terrain, and drying riverbeds as well as deep permanent streams, a vegetation typical of such terrain, and animals whose bones have been found at the Natufian and early Neolithic post-Natufian sites. Interestingly, there is a large number of common Afrosan terms denoting flocked ungulate animals, usually inhabiting steeps and semi-deserts. Finally, the Levant appears to be an attested region 
from where population began to spread starting in the early Neolithic, covering not only wide tracts of southwestern Asia, but also the adjacent parts of the Mediterranean and Africa. And according to the paper titled proto afrosan Lexicon, Confirming West Asian Homeland Pastoralism, and it reads, the article presents one more step towards the equation of the culture of speakers of proto afrosan reconstructed on the basis of paleolinguistic data with the early Neolithic post-Natufian culture of the Levant. According to the glottal chronological method of S.A. Starstrom, proto afrosan is dated back to approximately 10,000 BC, the same period as post-Natufian, supposed to be the cradle of agriculture and livestock breeding on the planet. As far as radiocarbon dating tells us, the article offers evidence for the presence of a layer of pastoral lexicon in proto afrosan in the form of 26 reconstructed names for large and small cattle and various other pastoral terms. The objective of the present paper is to present further evidence, this time referring to pastoralism presumably practiced by proto afrosan speaking community for the identification of this community with early Levantine farmers associated with the early Neolithic post-Natufian culture. These villagers, some of them, are the earliest known archaeological evidence for the cultivation of domesticated crops, cereals and plus, and the raising of domesticated livestock. It is for archaeologists to evaluate the correspondences between the archaeological evidence from the Levant as well as adjacent regions, and the reconstructed terminology referring to incipitant agro-pastoralism in the proto afrosan language, dated by the new version of the linguistic method glateral chronology to approximately the same period 12,000 through 10,500 BP and presumably the same area. This is part of the broader project aimed at drawing a most comprehensive picture featuring practically all aspects of life of early Neolithic people in the Near East which can be drawn from reconstructed proto afrosan lexicon, namely terms referring to people and society, economic life and technology, intellectual culture and natural and physical environments. This is all pretty important to understand because Natufians are the ancestors of Afro-Asiatics and Semites are an Afro-Asiatic people. And of course, Shem is the father of Semitic people. According to Britannica Semitic people, Semite, member of a people speaking any of a group of related languages presumably derived from a common language, Semitic. And according to Britannica Semitic languages, Semitic languages that form a branch of the Afro-Asiatic language phylum. Members of the Semitic group are spread throughout North Africa and Southwest Asia and have played preeminent roles in the linguistic and cultural landscape of the Middle East for more than 4,000 years. Afrasan, a large family of related languages spoken in Asia and Africa. Semitic, a major branch of the Afroasiatic language family. Hebrew, a member of any of a group of Semitic peoples who inhabited ancient Palestine and claimed descent from the biblical patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Semites are an Afro-Asiatic Semitic people, and Hebrews would also be an Afro-Asiatic Semitic people. And Natufians are the ancestors of Afro-Asiatic Semites. And both Natufians and Proto-Afro-Asiatics carried haplogroup E, which gives more credence to Semites being E carriers. According to the book titled In Hot Pursuit of Language in Prehistory, it reads, this paper makes an additional inference since there is archaeological and physical anthropological reason to believe that the Natufians were related to modern Semitic speaking peoples of the Levant. And according to the paper titled Paleolithic DNA from the Caucasus reveals core of West Eurasian ancestry and it reads such a scenario would also explain the presence of Y chromosome haplogroup E in the Natufians and Levantine farmers a common link between the Levant and Africa. And according to the Keenridge book 
Transition to Modernity, and it reads, Given the modern distribution of Semitic languages over the area in question, which belong to the larger Afro-Asiatic family, it seems appropriate to suggest that these first farmers of the Levant and their Mesolithic predecessors, including the Natufian culture, were speaking a Proto-Afro-Asiatic language. It may be that Proto-Semitic continued to develop within the Levant and Syria area, since both Ebalites and Akkadian, early Semitic languages are there attested early, the former around 2400 BC. And according to the paper titled Why Chromosome E Haplogroups Their Distribution and Implication to the Origin of Afro-Asiatic Languages and Pastoralism, it reads, The Proto-Afro-Asiatic group carrying the E-P2 mutation may have appeared at this point in time and subsequently gave rise to the different major population groups inhabiting current speakers of the Afro-Asiatic languages and pastoralist populations. When you put all this together, the distribution of Afro-Asiatic populations, along with the distribution of Natufian DNA, as well as the distribution of haplogroup E, you see a perfect overlap, a beautiful picture that lines up with everything that we covered. Genetically speaking, Abraham and his ancestors would have been like typical other Afro-Asiatic populations. They would have been typically Afro-Asiatic, which means that they would have carried Natufian DNA and they would have carried Y chromosome haplogroup E. And I don't see any reason why they would be any different from other Afro-Asiatic populations. After all, with Abraham being a Semite, proto-Semitic populations would have most definitely carried haplogroup E. According to the article titled E1B1B from EUpedia, it reads E-M34 is the main Middle Eastern variety of E1B1B and is thought to have arrived with proto-Semitic people in the late Copper to early Bronze Age. This would be Abraham's ancestors. And with Abraham and his ancestors being Semitic, this also makes them Afro-Asiatic, and most Afro-Asiatic populations carry the Yap gene, or Yap descendant. According to the book In Hot Pursuit of Language and Prehistory, most of the Afro-Asiatic speakers share the lineage defined by Yap descendant called PN2-215-M35. Furthermore, Levant Bronze Age samples carried around 63% of Natufian ancestry. Therefore, Abraham and his ancestors could have had around that much of Natufian DNA or even more. Therefore, I conclude that genetically speaking, Abraham would be typically Afro-Asiatic. Therefore, he would carry haplogroup E and Natufian DNA. And Abraham's ancestors would have expanded from the Levant in the early Bronze Age around the time of Peleg. And these Semites would have carried E markers and Natufian DNA throughout the Middle East because Semites descend from the Natufians. Natufians are the best example for the Stone Age descendants of Shem after the flood. Shem would have settled the Levant. This is according to extra biblical sources. According to the University of California Press conception of the conquest of the land during the Second Temple period, and it reads, According to the Book of Jubilees, Chapter 8, Shem, the son of Noah, inherited the entire idle land of Israel from the Euphrates to the Red Sea. Later, the Canaanites took the land by force and therefore cursed. Jubilees, Chapter 10, verse 29 through 34. The claim that the land of Canaan had actually been a part of Shem's inheritance that was then stolen by the Canaanites also appears in rabbinic sources. We read, for example, the Mishnah on Genesis chapter 12 verse 6, the Canaanites were then in the land, for the land of Israel was cast in the lot of Shem, as it is written, and Melchizedek the king of Shalom. Therefore I conclude that since Shem settled the land first, and the Natufians are the best population in the Levant to represent the ancestors of Semites, the Natufians would be the Stone Age descendants of Shem after the flood. Then in the early Bronze Age, proto-Semitic populations will expand from the Levant. This will be around the time of Peleg, 
and Abraham's ancestors would be part of that migration out of the Levant into Mesopotamia. Abraham's proto-Semitic ancestors would have carried haplogroup E as well as other Semitic populations and they would have carried Natufian DNA. Therefore, Natufian DNA and haplogroup E is the marker of Afro-Asiatic Semitic ancestry. With that being said, be blessed and shalom.